Hey guys, I have a uh, Melossi TC unit here today, the K15 uh, timing control unit. So this is the replacement uh, CDI coil unit for all Piaggio uh, 50cc two-stroke models as well as uh, many Aprilia 50cc two-stroke models such as the Sport City 50, um, the uh, SRMT 50 and the SR50. So um, there's a couple of reasons why you might install this and a couple of things that it does. So I'll speak about what it, about what it does first. Um, so essentially this replaces the factory coil CDI unit. On the Piaggio it's, a, it's an all-in-one unit, so it encompasses the CDI and the coil in the one unit, which is quite clever. Um, this model here splits them up um, to a, a separate coil, which is actually uh, significantly larger than the factory coil. Uh, it actually puts out uh, up to 50,000 volts, so it's um, a bit of an increase in spark level compared to the factory one. Um, and the CDI uh, being that it's more advanced, requires uh, a bit larger size. So a couple of things the CDI does as well. It has a fixed timing advance. So if you've been doing scooter shooting a little while, uh, you may have heard the idea of someone advancing the timing or retarding the timing. Usually on a two-stroke, uh, advancing the timing to a certain degree, you can get a little bit of benefit on. Um, you may have seen also uh, advanced timing woodruff keys be advanced by a certain number of degrees, often up to about three degrees. Uh, what this will do, uh, is um, essentially the same sort of thing as a uh, advanced woodruff key, um, but without sort of as much mucking around as a as uh, as an advanced woodruff key. So this is the proper way to do it. So this has a fixed advance, so it's not variable. Um, there are some other like the Powertronics uh, Molossi uh, units that you'll find for the Euro Four model has. It's not a fixed advance. It's to, it's a varying advance. It has about sixteen parameters, and it can advance it and uh, retard the timing. Uh, according to those parameters. This one's a fixed advance, so it advances it uh, all the time. Um, so basically those are the two uh, functions that this serves, as well as completely removing the rev limiter that's on the factory model. Now some uh, 50cc scooters, a lot of them are restricted, they'll have a rev limiter um, at, um, uh, at an RPM that you'll, you'll pretty much hit even when it's sto uh, completely stock. Um, this is part of the, uh, the restrictions in keeping it uh, within certain laws of certain countries. In Australia, it's not super relevant. It could be pretty unlucky to get caught um, because the rev limiter had been uh, removed on your scooter. I've certainly never heard of it. So um, uh, on the Piaggio models, um, in particular, the rev limiter, depending on the model, is between uh, 10,500 and 11,000 RPM. So the only time you're going to hit this on a Piaggio or an Aprilia with the Hyper 2 engine is if you have a high-end setup. So um, uh, a sport setup, like a sport 70cc cylinder kit, isn't going to hit it. A Matar replica 70cc cylinder kit is not going to hit it. And maybe if you have a really high-end exhaust, like a Stage 6 Pro replica, or a Yusuni R, Technogast Triops, something like that, maybe you'll hit it like at the absolute peak. But that cylinder just is not designed to make power at that high of an RPM. The time that you're going to hit it, and where this is going to make a significant difference, is if you have a cylinder with a bridge port, like an MHR or an MHR team, um, something along those lines with the bridge port on the exhaust port. Why this is, bridge port uh, cylinder kit makes power at a significantly higher RPM. They need to be able to rev to around that 11 to 13,000 to make power. Um, which is why with those cylinder kits, you also need a really high-end exhaust, um, just the way with the expansion chamber works. So unless you have that set up, the only real benefit you're going to get from this is potentially uh, potentially a little bit more fuel efficiency um, in terms of, uh, not in terms of using less fuel, but you get more fuel burning in the cylinder rather than uh, as much fuel being expelled through the exhaust. It may give you slightly more power, um, and uh, it may give you a little bit more responsiveness because of the advanced timing. But um, if you're purchasing this unit and installing it in your scooter, unless you have a really high-end cylinder kit with a really high-end exhaust, you're not going to see a drastic benefit. You'll see a small benefit, but it's not going to be uh, anything particularly earth-shattering. So there um, have been a couple misconceptions uh, around these over the years, and we've done quite a lot of testing with them. Uh, we had a race bike um, back, in the, back in the day, which where we started mucking around with these which had the MHR Team 50cc cylinder kit. The particular race was the Lemins, um, and um, it was limited to 50cc. That, that cylinder kit um, was hitting the rev limiter on the factory CDI. It took us a really long time to work it out. As soon as we put one of these in, 
immediately solve the problem because the cylinder was hitting the, um, the rev limit on the factory CDI and wasn't able to get into its peak power. Unless you have that sort of setup, uh, this is going to make a difference, but it's going to be a small difference. So um, uh, it's, I'd be very doubtful that it's going to give you more top speed to start a little bit more responsiveness, a little bit more poke. So um, it's still a really good unit and um, definitely worth installing if you're sort of at that end of things um, where you've maybe done a similar kit, you've done an exhaust, done a variator, you kind of expended most of the other revenues without uh, going to a, um, a higher end setup that's going to potentially be uh, less reliable. So um, still worth doing, but um, uh, generally at the, at the further end of things is definitely not something that you'd start tuning with.